In this video, we're going to talk about Indonesia Energy Corporation, trading under the ticker symbol INDO. At the moment, the financial market is very volatile, and we have to be careful about which stocks to buy, as well as the exposure and timing of our trades. This video is going to cover the recent price actions and the technical aspects of the stock. Before the video begins, a quick heads up that my analysis is based on sessions already completed and that it may not take into consideration the latest events. If that is the case, I will make follow-up videos to reflect them. With that being said, let's begin with today's topic. During the most recent trading session, the stock increased to $47.48 before closing the trading day at $38.10. We should pay attention to the $36.71 level nearby because it was tested twice, both as a support and a resistance before, making it a significant and interesting level to watch out for. Over the past 30 days, the trend of the stock has been bullish as it is peaking from its typical price actions due to the real-world events. At the moment, everyone is looking for exposure in oil and gas to hedge against the risk of stock crash in other securities, and as a result, we should be aware that the moment of glory may be a short one. Therefore, any premium is going to happen within the next couple of weeks in the most likely scenario. From the perspective of a longer time frame, which is six months and above, the trend of the stock has been clearly bullish because it is fairly recent to be traded in the exchange and therefore, we don't necessarily have what is normally considered as long-term per se. At the same time, the past 12 months do show us that the support level outside of the recent price action should be around $7 or $8. And we have to keep those in mind as we go in. When we look at the price trend overall, it's been speeding up. Because the current world events are suggesting that the demand for oil and gas securities will be very volatile and currently expanding upward at a very rapid pace. The trading volume of Indonesia Energy Corporation has recently been 66 million shares to an average volume of 18 million shares. Over the previous 52-week period, its price fluctuated between $2.61 and $49. The market cap of Indonesia Energy Corporation is currently at $306 million versus the enterprise value of $86 million. The difference between the market cap and the enterprise value is the premium or discount the financial market is willing to allocate to the company based on its current fundamentals, leverage, and market move. The enterprise value is the combined value of the company's assets minus the debts. If the company has a lot of debts or has a negative image amongst market participants, the asset's value may be impaired. With that being said, at the end of the day, it remains an estimation of the market every time it publishes its financial statements, so it's less reactive than the market cap and often more lenient for many other companies. One key element to note is regarding the enterprise value for growth type companies. One of the most significant assets they own is called Goodwill. Goodwill is an expectation of the market that this company is going to do better than its competitors. For example, it may have a better management team, a stronger brand recognition, or an online following. It is basically what makes this company unique versus other competitors. It's not a tangible asset that companies may use, but it's often the reason why some companies are perceived to be trading at a discount. The market cap may be lower than the enterprise value if the enterprise value has a big chunk of goodwill in it. But if the company goes to liquidation, there won't be any goodwill left. The bondholders and shareholders will be distributing amongst each other whatever that is left on the balance sheet, which is going to be a lot less than whatever is the balance now. When we compare the current price to its historical price fluctuations, the stock is 946% higher than the one month low, 1,462% higher 
than the three month low and 1,462% higher than the 52 week low. Regarding the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own negligible amount of its outstanding shares. The biggest institutional shareholder is called Advisor Group Holdings. It is relevant to understand the shareholder composition of a company because it helps to determine if you should hold the stock long term or to view it as a trade opportunity. If the stock is mainly held by retail traders, it can be a sign that the stock lacks the depth to justify long term trust from shareholders. The consensus is that there should be at least 25 to 30 percent of institutional participation for the stock to be perceived as a sound investment. Obviously, there's a lot of exceptions about this because many great companies are also held by retail traders for the most part. But this is the exception so far and not the rule. Let's also take a look at the short interest present in the stock, which is the amount of positions aiming to profit if the share price goes lower. Sometimes when there are a significant short interest in the total volume, sometimes when there's a lot of volume, this can be a sign that something organized is going on. Current short interest is 10% of the total floats and 31% of the transaction is coming out of the dark pools. Overall, my opinion on Indonesia Energy Corporation is bullish because it obviously responds to a significant and pressing demand from the market. I also believe, however, that the window of opportunity is going to be relatively brief. And if it is your decision to go in, you would have to be ready for some significant volatilities. The maximum exposure I recommend is between 1-3% to of your portfolio. For the immediate term, my recommendation is to buy the stock considering the recent price actions as well as the favorable road events for the stock at the moment. I would recommend a separate the allocation in batches of 25% at a time so that you can have enough room for purchases later. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy and the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand, which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre, because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that in fact, there aren't that many opportunities out there, this money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends 
or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to safe keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk manager. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position, not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities. But it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy way for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.